What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela hey. Yee. And Lala Anthony is in the building. Hi. I love it in here. Like, it Thank feels you. like an apartment. It does, I right? I love it in here. Let me tell you, I clean up every day because I hate, like, for things to be super junky. But yeah. there's always packages. You look so good, and I'm so happy to see you. Well, good. I'm, I'm trying to think, like, you know, with Lala, first of all, you know I love watching you on TV. Thank you. Like, Thank that's, you. that's a given. And I'm so excited for BMF Season 3 to start. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I know that in the end of the last season, because you know when a new season's about to start, you got to go back and to be the, like. Oh, right, and it's been a while because it was like the strike and everything happened. So the last season, is, it's been a while. Sometimes even I have to go back and like, like am just, I live? yeah, like it's just exa- exactly. <laughs> am, am I still on the show? So yeah, it ended with you know the shootout at the end with um my character and Da Vinci's character and DC mm-hmm. Young Fly, and now figuring out like what's happening. But clearly, I'm still here. I'm still alive. Yeah. Yes, Markeisha. And I was thinking about this when I watched the show, right? Because she is with a already in a relationship mm-hmm. in that show with a drug dealer who is very dangerous, clearly, yes, boy. right? But running around with, with Terry. Terry. With a little, little young boy. Little young running boy, Terry. with a little young boy. But in real life, right, like, if you know that you could endanger somebody else's life by being with them, because really she knows his life is in danger mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of who her man is, right? then don't you love somebody enough to be like, we got to, like, stay away from each other. I mean, you would think that, but I think females do it all the time. Yeah, it we never see happens. it where <laughs> it just never happens like yeah. that. You see it where... Guys fight. Every, most of the time when it's a beef between two guys, it has something to do with a girl. Oh, yeah. Most of the time it has to do with a female. You know what I mean? And it's like, damn, you knew that was going to be a problem. But you know how women can be when the they're in love? The power of the P, baby. The power of the P. The power of the P. The power of the D. Yeah. That too. So I was trying to be like, pen- I was saying penis for us. But, oh, oh, oh. But <laughs> that's okay. You're right. D sounds way more powerful. So it's just like <laughs> this character, Markeisha, is in love. And I think we can all relate to wanting to like take care of a man like you see potential and you're like oh I could be the one that could bring out bring him to his greatest potential and you keep trying that but like at what point just as women are we like all right we had enough I always tell like friends or just people that ask me for advice like you just can't be with somebody based on potential at what point does Mm -hmm. potential become like who they really are you just being sold a dream forever and next thing you know you look up it's five ten years later and you're still like well he has the potential and i think that's what's happening here she's infatuated because he's a younger guy she sees potential but he's smooth he's smooth but now like her life is in danger like what are you doing and the truth is he is younger and a a lot of times with younger guys you do have to see potential more than them achieving what they're already going to have you gotta have patience with Mm -hmm. younger guys because you know they're not where they're going to be, but again, to what extent? Like, I'm going to be patient with you, but you're not about to have me killed. <laughs> like, right. And crazy. you did hold out for a while, in yeah. all fairness. Yeah. It wasn't like you immediately was no, like, no, all no. right, baby, let's no, get no. it. I definitely, definitely held out for a while. But I think then what happens is you're so in in depth in the relationship, it's hard to get out. Like, it's easy to tell people, like, oh, well, just leave, or it's better to leave. It's Sounds hard. good. It's sound good. Mm-hmm. It's hard to do that. Yeah, and he made a lot of effort. Mm-hmm. I feel like the problem nowadays with social media and everything the way it is, people don't make effort like they used to back yeah. in the day, where you really no. had to, like, pop up. There's no somebody. effort yeah. nowadays. What type of guys you talking to? Because there's no <laughs> effort nowadays. Let me find out. It's no effort. It's just, like, a DM, like, come through. It's just like, yeah. that's it? Not well, even, like, I'm going to take you to dinner I'm gonna come pick you up like none no of that. one comes to pick you up Nobody then maybe they'll send you, you an Uber maybe <laughs> maybe but the thing is the guys who do make the effort sometimes we overlook them mm-hmm. like funny Marco he made some effort okay <laughs> he made some effort he, made, he sat down with you for a couple of hours he, did. he DM'd you he you did. left him on red I did. I did. You know what? <laughs> funny Marco is so funny. Everywhere I go now, that's all people want to talk to yeah, me about. They're like, cute. are you going to give him a chance? Are you going to go on a date with him? But you know what? I appreciate his effort. I really appreciate his effort. So that's he's a yes. Some, I didn't say yes. But I said I appreciate his effort. And um, he's persistent. And he's an eight and a half. He's an eight and a half. I think he can be a little bit more confident. But being in my DMs as much as he's been lately is oh showing gosh. me his confidence. He's for real in your DMs? Like, yes. You think he's serious? Because sometimes with comedians, you can't tell. If yeah, but I think if I was like, yeah, I'll go on a date with you. I, that's I think great content. He's going on a date. That's well, great content. I think it would be. <laughs> I would love to see what his plan is. Like, like, where does he plan to take you? Okay. I think that could be good content. And it then could be. I never even thought of it that way. Maybe I should just 
say yeah. And always the person that you're like, oh, I don't know about this, might be the person that is that is the one. And it felt like y'all was vibing. I'm just saying. But that's what you saw from yeah, that. I saw some vibing, you know, <laughs> happening. So, so I really appreciate his effort. I think he's super funny. I think he's very talented. Mm-hmm. And um, I had a fun time. Like, you know, we do so many of these. It just gets, like, redundant after a while. But it's nice to sit down with somebody and just have, like, a fun time and teach him, like, how to court a woman and dating techniques and stuff like that. That that made it fun for me. All right, so you just more want to train him. See, there I go, looking at somebody's potential. I Can know. I just find somebody who's there already? <laughs> well, listen, and you are there, by the way, yourself, because you look amazing. Thank you. I just want to say that, and I know you've been Thank really you. open on your journey as far as, like, working out all mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. I wish that I could have that discipline. You know what it is? I hate working out, mm-hmm. but I love my trainer. And it's like you have to find somebody that – you vibe with, you know, shout out to my trainer, Andreina. I love her. So it's like I go to the gym because I love being with her. And okay. for me, working out has become like therapy as well. Like we talk through my workouts, talk about problems, talk about issues. So I look at it like, yeah, I'm working out, but I'm getting like therapy at the same time. So I'm very appreciative of that. Otherwise, I'm not a gym person. Like I need yeah. something else to motivate me to want to be in the gym. I can't do those classes. Oh, I will like just run, but that's not enough. Right. And then you kind of hit a plateau. And our schedules are so crazy. Like to really carve out an hour or two every day, that's tough. Like, and in case you have things to do next, then your hair, you got to do that your part. hair See, makeup. people never think people about that. Like that right part. now my hair makeup done. <laughs> so for me to stop, go to the gym and then try to read, I'm like, no, I'm good for the day. Guys just be like, let me just take a shower yeah, real it. fast that's and I'm it. pop back. Back out. Exactly. Now, uh, Ludacris is also going to be on this new season, right? Mm-hmm. Is Luda? Is he on is this? It, is, is Luda on? Is he on? Oh, no. no. Okay, no, no. no. I don't know why I thought that. Little but baby. two changes two on. Two chains, two chains. And, and Neil's on. And Little Baby. And, and Little Baby. There's a lot of guest appearances yeah. happening. Yeah. That's going to be really fun for you it's, to be. It's fun, and I think it's, it's great to see people in character. This is a period piece, so everyone has to transform to, like, the 80s and 90s, mm-hmm. the wigs, the clothes, everything. Neo, everybody's talking about his <laughs> transformation. Sweetie looks amazing. Like, it's just really fun to see that and see everybody really get into character. And you're also doing a Waterboys movie, too? Yes, yeah, so that's something that Quavo and I uh, have worked on in Atlanta um, about – we all know what the water boys are mm-hmm. and about the backstory behind that. So that's something I'm really, you know, excited about. Got to see uh, Quavo go deep in his acting bag. So that was a fun one that we did. You know, it's interesting because you said everybody knows the history of the water boys. I've only been seeing it like because I feel like it's not like that here in New York. No, I don't. No, it's not. I don't really see that here in New York. That's an Atlanta down south kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like every light you stop at, it's like, whoosh, you know, they just they just come. But there's a story behind, you know, each one of those kids and why. Why are they selling water? What's the backstory? Why are they, you know, out here doing that? And a lot of them are really, really young. And it's just like, why are you not in school? Like, or where's your parents? So you get deeper into the stories behind some of the water boys in this movie. You know, Lala, you feel, it feels to me like you're the type of person who's always trying to find, like, the deeper, what's the story behind <laughs> I, I am that person. why this is happening? Because even with your own initiative that you have, like, yeah. we've seen you going to Rikers Island. Mm-hmm. We see you working with people. And even, like, off the record, you'll tell me about people who you want to make sure right. you can help and assist. But it's, like, has nothing to do with anybody knowing publicly no, what it is not. that you're doing. A lot of times it's behind-the-scenes work yeah. that, obviously, sometimes you have to, like, talk about your initiatives because you want people to support that right you know but it's something that's from the heart yeah it's from the heart and you know i i created 360 out of rikers you know from the heart it kind of was an accident i was just going there with you know my assistant and just really connecting and vibing with the kids and i was like you know i want to do something more here and you know there was a pastor pastor tim who was there doing incredible work and i was like you know i want to piggyback off of that and do some great things and that's how 360 you know was born and to me it's just it gives me the greatest passion when you see people the underdog succeed or people that we counted out you mm-hmm. know succeed and sometimes all people need is love and the right opportunity and amazing things happen so for me like that's there's just no other feeling like that for me right it gives me the greatest feeling so I'm always trying to figure out like how can I help what can I do I gotta fix this I gotta figure this out that's just kind of might be the cancer in me that's just the kind of person I am and you put your own money behind it because it's not like somebody's funding this but I was like Lala you gotta like make sure I I know I do need it I mean (laughs) yeah I mean I'm doing good but kids cost money and so definitely you know 
always open to people who want to come on board and help and definitely you know just so grateful because so many people do reach out like i know what you're doing i want to help i mean fab sent us clothes not too long ago boxes and boxes jermaine said he's sending clothes like it's just really cool to have the support of the community that just want to help in any way they mm-hmm. can whether it's you know clothing or financial i'm just so appreciative of that and you're from brooklyn yes to be clear yes. how do you feel being in brooklyn now like having know, been right? gone for so long know, and then right? coming it, it back is, home it is kind of surreal like because when i grew up in brooklyn it was a different upbringing so now coming back you know in a different wave is different but i'm just so Brooklyn, I'm so New York. Like, I can't see myself living anywhere else. Like, you know, everybody lives in L.A. now and all these other places. Like, I just can't see it. I go to L.A., I work, and I get right out of there. Like, I'm just New York through and through. It's something about the energy here. I just stay motivated. I stay Mm -hmm. on top of my game. I don't really find that feeling anywhere else. It's like a rush, rush, rush around. Yeah. I feel like when I go other places, I could, like, breathe, like, calm down. But in New York, it's like, gotta go, gotta do this, gotta do that. Everybody's, like, hurrying around. It's all, it's just nonstop. And I like being able to stop and breathe for two seconds, but then I'm over that, too. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to get, because I don't like getting complacent or, like, like, oh, well, what are you doing today? Let's go to lunch. Let's, like, everybody in L.A. is, like, (laughs) lunch all day and this, that. Like, I'm, I'm about, like, working and keep keeping it moving so i just love new york and you give yourself things to do all the time all the i feel time. like you know every time i kind of am the same way too so yeah, i get no, it you work non-stop too we don't know how to sit down i did um <laughs> kevin hart's podcast yesterday and he said you just don't know how to sit your ass down yeah. like i don't even know what that is and sometimes i'm like so tired and just so burnt out from working but i just don't know how to turn it off Right. And um, Kyan, how old is your son now? So Kyan is 16. Woo! I know. He's about to be 17, actually. He's turning 17 on March 7th. So, yeah, it's it's that age, and (laughs) there's a lot of things happening, but I'm on top of it. I'm paying attention. (laughs) He know he can't get anything over on me, so it's like I'm, I'm on it. But he's a great kid and incredible student and athlete and just really focused on, like, to see him be so focused at such a young age is inspiring to me. He wakes up gets to school on time, works out every day, gets to the games on time. Like, I don't have to remind him, like, set your alarm. He's just so disciplined and focused, and he's been like that for a long time. So Mm -hmm. I'm proud to see, like, his journey and his growth as well. Isn't it weird that he'll be going to college soon? It's something that I try not to think too much about but doesn't that feel like success to you for like for your skills as a parent to see how you've raised your son it does feel like success but it's my only (laughs) child so it's like this is it like it's not like okay well he goes and then I still have it's my only child and Kyan and I we live together he's my best friend he's my roommate essentially he's Mm -hmm. who I live with he's my son so it's like me adjusting to not having him in the house I, I do have a tough time with that Oh yeah. But listen, I, I'm sure for him, you're like the coolest mom a person oh, yeah. could have. He too. still he still loves to hang out with me. He's coming with me to the BMF screening tonight. Like I, I I'm amazed that my kid still loves being around me because I hear other parents like my kid doesn't even talk to me. He won't even answer the phone. And I'm like, oh, no, that's not happening. Over. Like we enjoy being around each other. We have a good time. So I'm excited that he'll get to hang out with me tonight and do the whole BMF thing. Now, I was also excited to see about your role as a creative director at Airbnb. Yes. yes. And La La Land. Yes. So talk to me about that a little bit, because, you know, I, I'm uh, dibbling dabbling in the Airbnb course, business. So I always want to hear what you have going on. Of course. On. So I think it's an incredible company, and the company aligns with my vision about community and bringing people together. And that's what Airbnb essentially, why it was created and what's it, what it's about. So if I can be a catalyst to bring, like, us together as people as a culture and do things that really move the needle for us i'm super excited to be in a position to do that so the first thing i did was la la land which is down in fort lauderdale right by miami it's my own property and i just decked it out everything la la down to like the sheets the robes the shampoo the conditioner everything i chose the decor so when you go in there you get a full la la experience and that's what i wanted my fans or people that you know follow me to have and it's it's going crazy down there. I mean, it's it's a fun property, and I want to do more of that. And now I'm just, you know, calling friends of mine and other people to do similar things or just do different experiences or activations with Airbnb that matter to us and, and that really, you know, move the needle for us. So it's something I'm really excited about. It looks amazing, too, by the way. I could tell you, you picked out all oh, the I was in I was in it. Like, that was I was in it because if I'm going to put my name on it and if I'm going to call it La La Land, I want it to be everything 
as if I lived there, like how I would want it to be. So it's been incredible. And the people who have stayed there so far, I mean, they're always like writing the best reviews or, or talking to us. Like, oh, that means so much. Incredible. Say, yeah, review. Can't play with those <laughs> reviews. Reviews mean a lot in, in, in Airbnb. You know what's so dope? It seems like everything that you do is stuff that you really enjoy. Yeah. You know, and that's meaningful to you. And sure. a lot of people don't have that. Like, it's nice to be able to get up and be like, okay, I know I'm working hard and I'm doing all mm -hmm. these things, but I love it. Like, I love, you know, like yeah. you said, curating these experiences, helping these uh, younger men at yes. Rikers Island and, and making sure that, um, you know, the acting, which is something that you've been... Love been working so hard at how, how comfortable are you now on set because I remember when you first got started <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm comfortable now like you know I'm always working and pushing myself to become a better actor like you never get to a point acting is not something you ever master like right. every role is different every character is different so it's not like oh, okay I've I've mastered acting. There's nothing else to do. I just shot a movie. I just got back from West Virginia. I was shooting a movie out there called Criminal Care. But, like, that was a whole different role. I was, like, a legal guardian for somebody. And, like, what is that? Every character brings something different. So I'm constantly growing and pushing myself with my acting coach or acting classes. I never get to a point where I'm like, oh, I got it all, you know, figured out. Because I want to – acting is my passion. I want to continue to get different roles and for people to see me – and other things like I loved being on power. It was one of my, you know, greatest career moments. I love BMF, but I also want to show people that I can do other things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't mind being a drug dealer's girlfriend, but there's <laughs> other, there's there's other things yeah, I, I could definitely like you're do. Typecast exactly. <laughs> there's other there's other things I can do. <laughs> no, and what about writing for you? Like, yeah. you know, getting behind that because I could see Lala doing some of that too. Yeah, I mean, I I love that. I wrote a book. You know, I wrote two books in the past, so yep. I've always thought about doing that again. But also from a producer standpoint is I'm really figuring out I want to work on a short film next and really figuring out what that's going to look like and starting to jot notes down and write that out so you know you can tell your story the way you want to that's what's great about writing and producing it's like you can do it your way mm -hmm. and um, that's something I'm definitely excited to step into all right, so the new season of BMF is March 1st. March 1st, I'm going to yes. be honest with you. They gave me the first episode because, you know, I was like, look, Lala's coming up here. I need to see, you know, what that's like. So right. I had to get a little sneak Okay, peek. so you got a peek. And the funny thing is I haven't even seen the episode. I've been doing interviews like, yeah, I saw the first two, three. I was like, I haven't even seen it. Yeah, so they said too. I was excited. Yeah, so Kyan and I will watch it for the first time tonight. Well, let me tell you something. It's all about you okay. in the beginning. Thank you. Uh, it is. It's all about you. <laughs> I just never because... saw it. That's what's so crazy. I know it's coming off of the shootout. Mm hmm and you are, but you know what? To be clear, on there you are a side piece on there too. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah, not forget yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we'll see know, that play I, out in that. I first. know that. I know that. <laughs> I, I, I know my place. I know my place on this show. I know my place. Oh gosh. It's so funny that you say that because I like in the character I take <laughs> on that kind of role, and my assistant is always on me because she's like, "You really carry that energy with you even afterwards." <laughs> like when they say cut, because I'm like on on edge. Like even with um the girl who plays. Luanda, it's it's not. I don't mean it, but it's like I'm still in that mode. Like, oh, you got him. I don't like you know. And I'm right. like, right. and she like, la. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's said yeah. cut. Like it's over. But I'm still like in, in that world. That side piece position ain't nothing to play with. Well, listen, I love to see it. You know, BMF is one of my favorite shows to watch. So I'm a. I've been a faithful uh, viewer since the beginning. Thank you. you Thank know? you. It's an incredible show. And shout out to Meech, you know, who's doing incredible work. And and Da Vinci, you know, as Meech and Terry, I think. They're just so talented. The show's amazing, and I'm glad it's back. People waited a long time for us to come back. You know, we had the strike and everything like that, so just happy that everyone's back working, back on set, and, and ready to see, you know, all the hard work we put into. And let me tell you, people love them BMF documentaries. Yeah, they do. You they know, do. as well, the they books, do. everything. They it's do. like a fascinating way. I don't think we'll ever see a time like that. I don't think so either. And I, always... I have no idea what that was like, but just watching this, watching yes. the documentaries, it's like, it was an insane it situation. It was insane, and I, I think you're right. I don't think we see something like that ever again, but it's nice to have these kind of shows to kind of put us back into, or give us a look into what, what that world was like. All right, well, I hope you make it through this season. I don't know, like, I know this is not completely 100% true. Because I saw some people had some issues, too, because Terry was in high school. They were saying... Oh, yeah, they didn't like that. They, they like, this, 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 this old lady, what do you know with this high school kid? I mean, it's she was older than him. Right. You know, she was significantly older than him. Like, that... 
Listen, it and people happens. also didn't know you worked in insurance. Yeah, that was funny. What they were like, what, what, what did he say? What funny did Marco say? You I was a, what did he thought like, it was? A bank, a bank. He yeah, said a bank. a bank. No, it was it like was not a bank because it was no screen. That's what I'm saying. It was no bank. <laughs> it was a car, car insurance. Like, but some people, place. I saw a lot of people in the comments like, I didn't realize that. That's what she. Was. I know they did, they just said they didn't realize that, but that's definitely what it is. <laughs> and you know, back then when the age difference was was different. Like back in the day, people didn't put so much on it. Like. It was crazy. Girls was messing with, oh, like, nah, when you think about it, it was crazy. Yeah, what was going on? Nah, it was, I, nah I, I, like, yeah. it was wild what yeah. was going on back back in the day. Yeah, so let's be clear. But it is also, like, based, it's not 100% true. Right. That's the no, other thing no, people no, have it's, to understand. It's loosely based, but a lot of that, you know, is is the story. And I just try to bring my character justice and bring the story justice. And I'm just happy to see that people are into it. People going to talk about it. Like, my thing is, I'm glad people are talking. Like, you're talking because you're watching and you're engaged in what's happening. So that means I'm doing my job. Yeah, and you're doing a good job because they you. really believe it. Thank they really you. believe you are <laughs> a bank teller. All right. Well, listen, Lala, thank you so much for joining us. I know you're super busy. You got a lot going on. Of but I, always I will always come here to support you. And thank you for always looking out and all the amazing things that you're doing. Like, you're, you're, you're heavy in community work and, and bringing people together. And I'm, I'm always so appreciative of you. You know, I want people to always know that like with Lala, the stuff that you see that she does is not all that she does. That's why it's important just for people to understand it's not just, okay, I'm posting this, I got, and they, they're like, okay, Lala's beautiful, she's got her hairline, yeah. she dresses impeccably, <laughs> you see you. her on the red carpet at the Met Gala, but behind the scenes there's so many things that you There's do that you don't even on. post about. Yeah. So that's really what it's all about, like the, the change that you make in people's lives in thank real time. You. Thank you. So thank you, Lala, all for right. joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Nice. It's way up. Way up.